YouTube is going the goat house is back the NFL trade deadline is tomorrow and in this video I got my last second predictions we're going to go over a bunch of candidates I'm going to give you their top landing spots in my opinion wild card landing spots and then my final prediction for that player some of these guys I don't have being dealt a lot of guys I do have being dealt of course I don't think all of them happen at once that'd be a lot of trades but uh, I think they're very realistic some realistic landing spots realistic predictions something to watch out for here we have recent trade deadline videos that are definitely still worth watching watching uh must make moves for teams some good fit some good landing spots things like that multiple videos out there uh, and then we'll probably have another video tomorrow maybe winners losers something like that but we have our weekly coverage as well with our picks and more so join us for that follow us on twitter uh, news, rumors, uh, thoughts, grades, Roquan Smith trade grades on there. Of course, I've been shifting them over to there, so must follow on Twitter. Uh, Picks League, sponsor links pinned in the comments. I'm rocking the Micah Parsons chain from the GLD shop. One of our sponsors, code GOAT, 33% off. Micah Parsons actually wears this in-game, the exact one here. So they got some sick NFL chains there, real stuff, and we have that code uh, GOAT. So link pinned in the comments for that, as well as Liquid IV. Check it out. Here's our Twitter. Must follow. I kind of gave a sneak peek of the this video already. Just constant talk. There's trade grades. There's videos on there. Been doing this for all the all these uh, trades that have been happening. So it's a must follow. So Bradley Chubb, which I gave a sneak peek to that on. Uh, I actually put it out there because it, just like 20 minutes ago, before recording this, 30 minutes ago, whatever. Schefter was talking live on air on ESPN, getting ready for this Monday night game. And the way he was talking was like Chubb trade's gonna happen. Like he didn't say that, but it was like. He said something like, take it to the bank. Like, it, it, it's probably going to happen, even though the Broncos just won, and maybe they weren't going to be sellers if they won. Um, you know, but so it's probably going to happen. And I, and I had this uh, this slide. This was the first graphic we made here when I was making this video ready before then. So I tweeted this out there in case it went down before I got done recording this. Who knows? By the time you listen to this, maybe it's done. But, um, yeah, the top landing spots, you see those teams there. I think I made a video with a scenario of him going to the Cardinals. I think it makes a ton of sense, you know, mainly because a need and Vance Joseph's there. Uh, but I think Seattle makes a, makes sense. Looking for a pass rusher, good team, good pick, draft picks to trade. The Jets have been linked to Bradley Chubb. Apparently, they're willing to trade their first-round pick. I have a hard time believing that because that's still that pick's still up in the air on where it could be. Uh, you know, they're relying on defense right now. They have a good record, but injuries too, you know, so that is risky as hell. I'm kind of, again, the Cardinals make a ton of sense. The Seahawks make almost as much sense, uh, which is good, but I'm kind of 50-50 between, I shouldn't say 50-50 because I'm giving some sort of shot to the other three teams, but I'm almost 50-50 between Rams and Dolphins. Remember my best fit, most likely landing spot video, I had Rams. They're very much in on a pass rusher. But I'm leaning towards the Dolphins, as you see at the bottom there in my prediction. Uh, and we'll get to that reason. Some wild card teams in there. Wild card teams are wild card teams for a reason. I think there's some sort of tiny, tiny percentage of a shot. But, um, you know, don't overreact from it. It's not like the top landing spots there. Value's tricky. I, I think he's a first-round pick, and it sounds like because of a bidding war, it could be more. Uh, but I think he has to agree to an extension. It doesn't mean it's going to happen like right when they trade for him, anybody trades for him, but um, it's very risky though because you got a guy that's going to be a free agent, so you can you can maybe have him without trading a first. It's a guy that's going to be a free agent, so you can lose him while trading a first. So it's pretty damn risky. He does have injury concern, but he's a very talented pass rusher with some upside here. Uh, but it sounds like he's it's it sounds like it's going to be a first round pick. It sounds like a team, at least a team, has offered a first round pick. Um, what I know at the Bronco, what I know about the Broncos, they like Bradley Chubb. They have a very good defense. He's part of that. They don't necessarily want to trade him. Uh, but they don't look like they can win a Super Bowl right now. They're struggling a little bit. They need more pieces, especially on offense. They believe the defense could be good even without Chubb. But they need picks now because C they, Seattle has their picks. You know, the Rams don't really help them. And why I was, you know, why I'm 50 50 Rams, Dolphins, why I chose the Dolphins. The Rams really don't help them right now if it's a, if it's a first round pick. You know, for this draft, they don't have one. And next year's one could could do. Uh, the Dolphins can help them right now. They have the 49ers pick, which could be a later first. Maybe the there's a shot the Broncos rather have that 2024 first from the Rams because they value it more. There's a possibility. I don't see it. Um, I think the Rams, if the Rams get him, it's because they offered a lot more than just the 2024 first. Or if it's just the first, it's because nobody else offered a first and that would be why the Rams land him but again those other teams have a shot the Jets were linked to him just as much as Miami uh, and Seattle and Arizona because Seattle has a bunch of picks they have the need Arizona has the, the fit makes sense there there's a connection um, you know so those teams make some sense but I'm gonna go Dolphins they have that first round pick right now it's a very talented team they're very confident very confident with their offense right now uh, when it when it's healthy that's kind of the key there obviously uh, defense 
they're confident with if it's healthy. It's not really healthy. They're beat up at corners. Not too many great fit options, great fit options at the cornerback position there. They're hoping to get Byron Jones back. Something they can do more to make it easier for their secondary is get more pass rush. They have some pieces. How can we get them going more? We go get a big time pass rusher like Bradley Chubb. So a lot of things make it make sense for the Dolphins here. That'll be my prediction right now. But again, I can see other options happening. Uh, next, talk about Jerry Judy. Uh, top landing spots, you look at the Giants have been in on him. They need a receiver. They're very beat up. The Packers need a receiver. They always need a receiver. Do they actually pull the trigger? Uh, Ravens always need a receiver. Do they actually pull the trigger? They save money on that Roquan Smith trade as the Bears paid pretty much all of that salary. So they're looking to do something else. Do they, Does it actually happen? Cowboys... Um, you know, feel like they're in win now mode. Uh, Jerry Jones ready to go all in. They could use another receiver. They haven't really been specifically linked. Like, yes, the Cowboys are in on this guy. They're kind of being a little secretive about it, but I think they're kind of in. Some people have kind of mentioned it. Like, maybe they're in. Uh, and the Browns, I like the fit of Judy on the Browns. They definitely could use him. Maybe less and less likely, though, do they actually pull the trigger? Maybe win or, win or lose uh, tonight, Monday Night Football. It's starting in – It's starting. In, i got to hurry up here. It's starting soon. It's 6.53 Central Time right now as I'm looking at my clock. But uh, maybe if they win, they make a move. They lose, they don't. Wild card teams, teams that kind of need receiver or have been linked to some receivers possibly. Uh, and then a value, I'd say second-round pick. Has he played to that yet? No, but for the Broncos to get rid of him, I think they're going to need a second. I'm going to say the Broncos keep Judy. I'm watching out mainly for a lot of – teams the top landing spot teams that's why they're up there but if I had to narrow it down the NFC East teams here the Giants uh, in the Cowboys uh, I know the Giants are very much in on Judy the, the Cowboys would like to have Judy they would like to have another receiver they would like to have a good one here uh, cheap makes makes some sense and the Broncos like Judy too much he had a good game in their last win and they would need a second-round pick. Would they even accept the second-round pick? Will it even get offered to them? So those are the big questions there, why a bit has to happen. But I have Judy on, even though it's a predictions video. Well, yeah, I'm still predicting no trade. But I put Judy, because a lot of guys, with I'm predicting no trade. They're kind of obvious that I didn't include in this video. This one's not so obvious. I think it's a possibility here. Hamler I don't have in this video. I don't think he gets traded uh, either. But it's a, it's a possibility. It's a small trade. One wouldn't shock me. Uh, next, Brandon Cooks. Uh, some similar landing spots. The Giants seem to be in on him. Uh, the Vikings apparently are in on him and want to add another receiver to that pass-first offense now. New look Vikings there. Uh, Rams have apparently been in on him. Uh, and then the Packers and Cowboys could be teams that are interested, maybe should be interested. Some wild card teams there, of course. I think the value is a third. It's a tricky one. The, the Texans definitely could be asking for a second. Um, my issue here, and a trade definitely could happen. It's kind of been heating up. Cooks has been mentioned a lot. does feel like he's mentioned every trade deadline. Uh, but... It's tricky because a team has to offer what the Texans would willingly accept. Would they be willing to accept a third? That's a big question. Will a team even offer a third? He has $18 million salary next year. Keep that in mind. Teams are either going to not want to pay that. They will want to pay it, but they're going to offer him like a fourth-round pick or a fifth-round pick. Or they will give the Texans, you know, that third maybe, but the Texans got to pay a good portion of it since it's already guaranteed. Uh, and all like so many things need to happen. They're like one of the options need to happen, and they're, it's not really simple for it to happen. So it's a possibility uh, that he gets traded. Um, I almost wanted to say the same thing as Judy. I mainly keep an eye on Dallas and New York. The Giants, it doesn't make a ton of sense, though, because they're – they were all about not spending big money. We're a team of the future. I know they're winning right now. They need a receiver, but to be, you know, to they could afford them eighteen million next year. But to be in on that for a, a day two pick, I don't think I see Joe Shane being in on that. So uh, they've they've talked about it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of goes to my prediction. No team offers enough. That's kind of that's kind of the thing. There's nothing where a team would pay his salary and offer him this pick or. Uh, would give them an extra, you know, better pick if the Texans pay, like a really good pick if the Texans pay a portion. I don't see them kind of coming to an agreement on every little thing there. So that's why I'm going to say no trade. But the, but the Cowboys, it kind of feels like they're, they're they're really good this year. It kind of feels like they they realize that too and that they, they can do something. And the NFC is pretty open. So going to get a guy like Cooks, an outside receiver, because remember Lamb plays inside and out. Noah Brown plays inside and out. Gallup plays outside, more of a possession Contested catch guy. Go get that speed outside guy. So I'm keeping an eye on Dallas, but too many things need to come together here. Um, but the Cowboys could make it work. They could make it work, but we'll see. That's an interesting one. Kareem Hunt. Uh, I've been all over the Rams for Kareem Hunt. It makes a lot of sense, mainly because they are very much in. They need a running back. They're going to trade Acres. They want to, and they're very much in on uh, Christian McCaffrey, who is a, a running back with a 
very high upside as a pass catcher. Kind of same with, with Kareem Hunt. McCaffrey's better, but Kareem Hunt's very good. It's similar. So the Rams made a lot of sense. I just It's just a last-second gut feeling that the Eagles might be might, might make more of that push. They're going to value it a little bit more. Uh, there's been some weird rumors about nothing from a legitimate source, but about um, the Dolphins uh, reconnecting with Tyreek Hill, some kind of Instagram post or whatever. I never looked too far into those, but interesting. And the Bills could use a back, but they got a collection of backs they like. Wild cards, uh, Saints, Ingram's hurt. Bucks always looking for backs. Denver could upgrade. They just won, so maybe they're kind of back in win-now mode, but they're wild cards for a reason. Brown said they would take a fourth. Um, some teams don't have a fourth this year. Rams, Eagles, that makes it a little tricky, so it's going to have to be equal, maybe a future third, maybe a uh, a late pick this year and a fourth next year or just a fourth next year, something like that. My latest gut feeling is Eagles. They're all in right now. Sanders has been solid. Hunt kind of brings another element to the game. Sanders has some injury concern. They haven't really liked Gainwell and Scott as much as they normally do, so they can use Hunt with Sanders as well. Um, you know, it's, it's tricky because I love the Rams. The Rams fit. What are they going to do at running back? Their focus is everywhere right now, so the Rams are very tricky to predict what they actually will land and what they won't because they won't get all of it. I think they'll make some moves. They won't get all of it. It, though uh, maybe a bunch of small moves if it's more you know so it's a little tricky my latest gut feeling says eagles um let's go with a scenario i got, I got a scenario in this video so what the bears are selling right now they're big time sellers um and obviously because they trade Ro robert quinn and roquan smith they almost said roquan quinn uh mix them together they trade both of them equals roquan quinn and uh, they're just big-time sellers, and it sure looks like Herbert's better than Montgomery in that new scheme. We keep talking about it. Uh, it just fits the scheme a little bit more, and uh, Montgomery's got an expiring deal. The Bears aren't going to be afraid to trade him. I thought this made sense. Go ahead and lock this in. No, that would be very bold of me, this specific scenario. But if the Rams aren't going to get Hunt, which they very well could, I've been you know, on that for a bit, who are they going to get? Other guys could be available. Montgomery could make some sense. I mean, I'm not thrilled about the fit. Like, yes, he fits. He's going to be great there. But I think he'll be solid there. So it doesn't mean I don't think he's going to be good at all. But it also made sense that Akers, because they're trying to move on from Akers, there really isn't anything firm right now. So that makes it a little tricky. Um, but this could make some sense. Like, send Montgomery to the Rams. It's exactly what the Rams are looking for, a back that can help them now. Akers doesn't want to be there. Send Akers to the Bears because the Bears still want a one-two punch. They just don't They don't want a one-man Herbert show over there. They'll take Akers. He's under contract cheap next year. So that kind of – they're set at running back then. They can focus on everything else. And they get a fifth-round pick because the Rams lose some leverage here because Akers wants to be dealt. Montgomery is a little – you can trust him a little bit more right now as well. I know it's expiring deal. Akers is not. So that – Makes it look better for Chicago, but I think the pick would have to go along, um, and we'll put a 2024 fifth in there. So not even 2023. I came up with a 2024 fifth. Um, so I think that's I think that's a really good deal for both sides. It, it makes some sense there. If Acres wasn't like demanding to be traded or anything, then it, it, you know maybe it's a six round pick because I think the Rams lose a little bit of leverage there with that. But the Bears aren't afraid to do this. But the downside of this maybe not happening is maybe the Rams don't feel Montgomery's that great of a fit or the Bears they've been making these trades because they're collecting some pretty good picks I think there's a drop off between a fourth and a fifth round pick with like really good but I mean, you could do some damage with a fifth but maybe a 2024 fifth wouldn't be that appealing to the Bears where it's like yeah, we'd probably rather keep him so I thought it was an interesting scenario that made some sense in a way I'm kind of predicting maybe Montgomery ends up with the Rams if I don't have Hunt going to the Rams um, which very well could happen I think Montgomery could be a little bit cheaper perhaps um I threw a scenario in there for you guys, but back to kind of the normal slides here. Nelson Aguilar, um, yeah, multiple options. One second, I'm feeling the Raiders because the connection with Carr, McDaniels, they could use another receiver. Uh, the Chargers because they definitely need another receiver. They been, haven't been able to get the ball downfield, which should be their game with Justin Herbert. Aguilar is a deep speed that downfield guy. Makes sense. Cowboys, I really feel like they're, they're all in right now. They're in a the market for a receiver. Maybe they don't want to spend too, too much. Aguilar is a little expensive, though, right, uh, with his, with his uh, salary for this year, but not nothing crazy. Giants are all in on receivers. It feels like they're linked to the bigger ones, Judy, Cooks, uh, but you never know. This could be like an option C, which we'll kind of get to the option type thing. Then the Packers uh, been linked to the bigger ones, but you know maybe they like an option C or something like that. Wild card, some other teams have been linked to receivers or could be sneaky. The Bengals have Jamar Chase hurt. They don't want to go all out because Chase will be back, so maybe a smaller option here. Value is a six-round pick. He's probably more talented than that, but he isn't playing right now, uh, and he has a little bit pricey of a contract uh, issue. 
Uh, for guys, and we'll talk about Isaiah Wynn, guys like Isaiah Wynn and Nelson Aguilar, the Patriots might need to pay a portion of their salaries for a team to be able to trade for them. But the Patriots themselves are very limited on uh, on cap space, so they can't really help a team out. But if Aguilar gets traded, they clear that space, then maybe they can pay help a team with Wynn or vice versa or uh, like a little bit of both. So therefore, it, you know, it, somehow it can, it can work. Some things need to happen. But I'm going to go Cowboys here. It is tricky. This is where the predictions could end up being a little messy. They make sense. They're realistic, even though they don't happen, obviously. But um, the Cowboys, like I said, I can very well see them getting Judy. I don't think he'll be traded. Or Cooks. I think maybe Cooks a little more likely than Judy if one were to be traded. Cowboys can end up with them. So then one of them. So they're not going to end up with Aguilar then. He's going to end up somewhere else probably. My next choice would prob I'll probably go Chargers. Chargers probably my next choice. Um, but I think Judy doesn't get traded. And I think Cooks is too complicated. But I'm really eyeing, the, eyeing Cooks for the Cowboys. So you see option A, option B. Uh, so maybe they end up with option C here. They get an outside receiver with some speed. Again, Lamb could play inside and out. Noah Brown, same thing, inside and out. Gallup is uh, outside kind of possession type guy, contested catch guy. So you get that outside speed here, which makes sense. He helps the Cowboys. It's not the most appealing thing. I think he'll be a lot better on the Cowboys with Dak Prescott than he is with the Patriots. Maybe he can kind of get more of that Raiders, Aguilar, uh, you know, which was good. So maybe not the super sexy addition, but I think it's very possible here. Uh, but again, if not Cowboys, I'm looking at the Chargers probably. Uh, and then next up, we got A.J. Green. This is kind of just a gut. I haven't really heard. I think people have thrown out there that what if A.J. Green could be traded because he's not playing much. Hopkins is back. They trade for Robbie Anderson. They use other guys as well. Hollywood Brown will be back at some point, even though different style receiver here. But, uh, I mean, both outside receivers, just different style. Um, so I kind of thought A.J. Green, and I just I, I, it made sense with the Packers. Just kind of like a veteran guy. Outside contested catch guy, you know, maybe can have a connection with Rodgers. I just, I just me kind of putting the get together here. So maybe it's a little bit of a bold one since there really hasn't been any linking of any sorts. Well, some of these that really haven't been, but um, yeah, you know, and again, I think a lot of the Packers' issues at receivers are. Yeah, I, I kind of up here things. Just got guys that are kind of young, still trying to get on the same page with Rodgers. I think you know, smart guy. You know, maybe the the skill set isn't full isn't fully there anymore, but there's some talent there. But you know, he can kind of get on the same page with Rodgers. Green, that is, you, you know, so just kind of the 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 knowledge is still there. Is my point. So that's where the Packers prediction is. So he's got some similar teams we've been talking about. Could use a receiver. I think he could be pretty cheap. He's cheap in terms of salary as well. So it's like a why not situation. Uh, but yeah, a few other teams that could use a receiver. Maybe he's AJ Green is like option C or D for a team, um, you know, that miss out on some guys there. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, just kind of a bold gut feeling there. And then the Packers, Aaron Rodgers ends up with AJ Green there, a new, new type of weapon uh, for the rest of this year. Next up, Isaiah Wynn. Uh, not too many landing spots. But some teams that could use a left tackle there. Uh, and the value's tricky. People, I think, will instantly say. Make sure none of these trades went down. Um, no, no trade went down yet. Uh, people may say with that value, like fourth round, I don't know about that because he's struggling this year. He's really not playing much. But what you got to think about is he, he's got some good experience at left tackle, fits left tackle pretty well. He's young um, with experience, has some upside. It's rare that tackles are available. Teams are desperate for tackles. Uh, but another big reason is – he if the if the Patriots keep him and let him walk, uh, they will get a compensatory pick because again once again free agent tackle young upside pretty decent at left tackle just don't put him at right somebody's gonna pay him somebody's gonna overpay him it just happens every year the Patriots know that so they will probably get a possibly a third round but I'd say a fourth round 2024 compensatory pick so a 2024 fourth round pick they may ask a third actually a 2023 I should say fourth round pick uh, will do the trick if fifth is possible fifth you know 2023 fifth instead of that fourth compensatory if the Patriots thinking that way maybe they're like all right so I think a third fourth or fifth or keyword possible I'd say I put the value of the fourth people will disagree with that but I had my reasons there that makes sense I'm gonna go Rams they need to left tackle most on anybody that they, they, they could afford to rent him you know and then maybe sign him for the future if he's just they feel he's better than nope and kind of put make, make nope the swing tackle again swing tackle that is uh while Whitworth was there that's kind of the role he was in filling in for people but 
Um, yeah, so I thought that made some sense. It's just crazy because the Rams are in on tackles, they're in on receivers, they're in on running backs. There, am I missing something? You know, so are they? What are they going? They're going to land something. They have to, right? But they can't land everything. How much will they pay? Will they go for a bunch of cheaper options? They're very tricky to predict, but they definitely make the most sense. And I think the Patriots playing less and less, playing him less and less. They're making it obvious they'll be willing to deal him. They don't want to get low ball. That that's the be be the reason he doesn't get trade traded is because. Um, somebody just offered like a six round pick and the Patriots like somebody's going to end up overpaying this guy in free agency. We'll wait to 2024 to take our compensatory pick, whether it's a third, fourth or fifth, you know, so uh, maybe they wouldn't even accept the 2023 fifth. That's a possibility as well. Well, the issue here is going to have to be equal value. Um, if it's a 2023 fourth, equal to a fourth because the Rams don't have that fourth. So they're going to have to figure something out there, which is always doable. Maybe a swap of picks, just straight up value would be a fourth. But if it's 2023, the Rams can't do that. But they're the most likely to land him. Um, very well could be a no trade, though. It's a tricky one, especially the Rams, the Patriots, some tricky teams to figure out. But, um, yeah, that's the other tricky part, too. The teams are going to need to – they're going to need the – the Rams would need the Patriots to pay a little bit of the portion of that remaining salary. Um it's possible they can help him out. They may have to trade Nelson Aguilar, which I think there's a shot they trade him. That could assist something like this. So some things need to happen. It's a little tricky here. Uh, William Jackson, I was back and forth on my prediction on this one, but you see some teams that need a corner. There's other teams that need a corner. But William Jackson, it kind of sounded like he wanted to go to a more of a man coverage team. So if I don't have your team listen, and you think they need a corner, it's just because they've been more of a zone team. Now it's possible somewhat he still goes to his own team. I just don't think it's super likely. Uh, but yeah, a list of teams that could use a corner and run some man coverage, obviously. His value is a lot cheaper than where his talent is or could be because he's just holding. It's kind of like he's holding out. They're holding him out right now. They might be playing better without him. You know, and then he has another year. He has uh, he's a little pricey this year, like three point two or three point seven, you know, somewhere around that three range million this year. Uh, and then he has a year on his contract next year. Team could get rid of him, I suppose. Uh, get rid of that contract, but. So teams aren't dying to do this. I, I think you know maybe some fans maybe are too high on William Jackson too. I, I think. Uh, you know, he has potential. He hasn't really worked out. He was pretty solid last year on the Bengals. You see the upside there, and he can help a team out for sure. You know, talent-wise, he's better than a six, but because the situation, the leverage lost the commanders, probably a sixth uh, there. And I've heard of some teams that just don't really love the idea of his talent, like even though if he fits, I've heard of that. So of some teams that, you know, maybe could be interesting, maybe it'd be even cheaper than a six if they do it. So I went to Falcons. I really thought about, I mean, several teams here. The Dolphins make it, I and mean, it was really back and forth between the Falcons and, and the Dolphins. The Raiders make a lot of sense. They need another corner out there, but, you know, they're losing right now. Same with the Steelers. They need another corner out there. Um, these teams can use them next year as well. That's why it makes sense. They fit in terms of scheme, uh, coverage concepts, um, but they're losing right now. The Patriots, Patriots are tricky because they definitely could use them. They run man coverage, you know, Will Bill Belichick trust him in man coverage? I guess the question I probably, but um, do they? They don't, usually don't pay a price for corners. Like he's got, a, he's a little pricey right now, so that's a tricky part there. But I could see it. Uh, Arizona can use a corner. They've been running more zone lately, though. They're usually a man team. Uh, you know, so those teams make a lot of sense. Like I can see a lot of those teams, but I'm really left with the. I actually had the Dolphins plugged in here when I was making when the graphics guy was making the graphics. I had the, I had them plug in the Dolphins. But I'm I'm gonna go, I'm back and forth the Dolphins and the Falcons. I went with the Falcons here. They're really beat up a corner. So are the Dolphins. Uh, but I think the Dolphins are trusting that Byron Jones will be back soon. If they traded from them, they're trusting that he's not. You know, and then they got Byron Jones, Davian Howard. So what if they trade for William Jackson? A little pricey in terms of the salary this year or next. And then Byron Jones comes back. It's like, all right, Jackson, you're on the bench. We got we got Jones Howard in there. I don't know. So the Falcons made a little bit more sense. AJ Trout dealing with a hamstring. Hayward out for season. Last two weeks, the Falcons got torched through the air. One team was the Panthers, more so on the ground, but at the end of the game, but the Bengals was one team as well. They need a corner right now. They've been running more man coverage. Went from kind of zone to man, uh, and now they're unable to do that because they're weak at corner. So add a guy like William Jackson, it makes some sense there. Cheap, cheap, and they have money. They have money this year. They have money next year. It's really not going to make a dent in them, and they can move on from in the future if they need to. It just make Falcons make the most sense to me, so that's where I came up with that. Uh, Sean Murphy bunting was a recent one that his name was thrown out there. Uh, trade deadline, but I haven't seen anybody linking many teams, but I'm going to do that. Um, some of the similar teams, adult, he's more of a slot corner. I liked him outside at Central Michigan. I love this tape at Central Michigan, actually. Um, 
So he can play outside. It's just we haven't seen him doing a bit. I think most likely he's going to be a slot corner. So I mainly list the teams that could use a slot corner. List some other teams that maybe would use him outside. So if you don't see your team there, that'd probably be why. But most likely going to be a slot guy that can help you outside here. Um, but some of the similar teams, some of the similar teams here, teams that are beat up or could use a cornerback. Uh, I really th once again the last guy William Jackson. I was kind of. Dolphins or Falcons. This one was kind of Dolphins or Cowboys. I was kind of back and forth. I mean, the Falcons make sense, too. I, I know he's different than William Jackson, but if they don't get William Jackson, they had some sort of corner to help him out. 49ers, you know, Mosley got hurt a few weeks ago. Um, they're shifting guys in and out. You know, they got injuries, so it, it's a possibility. But I think they just – I was really thinking, from like, that made sense to me, but they, I think they just rather bring an extra safety. I mean, they play Ward in the slot. Ward's like a free safety slash uh, – Jimmy Ward, that is. Free safety slash slot corner. So, I mean, they'd rather go with that. Um, Cardinals possibility. I mean, those first three teams, I was really 50-50 on the Dolphins and Cowboys, really back and forth. And just like the last one, I didn't give the Dolphins. I didn't give them this one either. I gave them Chubb, though. That's the big one. Um, but cheaper, cheap option. I like the upside. I, he was pretty good. He was pretty good in the early years with Tampa, even the Super Bowl run. Um, so I think somebody gets gets a pretty good cheap pickup here with this one. I'm going to go Cowboys. Jordan Lewis got injured a couple weeks ago. They had Bland in there. They're shifting guys in and out, you know. I had Deron Bland as a potential upside at safety. I think I was the only person with that. So, But he, maybe he can make it work in the slot. Usually those types of guys can, uh, the versatile-looking guys. Uh, but I, I, And they actually gave up a lot of offense to the Bears, too, You know, without Jordan Lewis. I thought that was interesting as well. They can definitely get better in you, Sean Murphy, bunting uh, on the inside. They're, they're set with the outside with, obviously, Diggs, one of the better corners of football, and Anthony Brown. So uh, Murphy bunting makes sense. And like, like I said, he played outside in college. He was pretty good there. You know, if somebody gets hurt, you can slide them outside. It's a pretty good depth for there as a starter. Before that, a starter at slots in the slots. So, the Cowboys make a ton of sense. Make a ton of sense to me. Uh, next, Josh Allen. I almost didn't put him on the video. I didn't put Brian Burns on the video. I didn't put DJ Moore on the video. I didn't it's just got. If I if you don't see a big name player on the video. Big name player. If you don't see a big name player in the video, it's because I just don't think he's going to be traded. I'm not going to guarantee all of them don't get traded, but I'm pretty confident when there's some smaller names I don't have in the video. I've kind of predicted where they're going to go in the past videos. Um, you know, but Josh Allen, I almost didn't put on here because I don't think he gets traded. Uh, but I think it's a possibility. I think it's a possibility. Uh, you look at these teams that are pretty desperate for pass rush. If they miss out on Chubb, the next best guy is Josh Allen. He's not too far off. He has upside. The next best guy for Josh Allen. Pretty far drop off, um, and I don't think Brian Burns is really available. So we're not talking about Brian Burns. He's up. He's above both of them, in my opinion. Uh, but next guy's probably Jerry Hughes, who we'll actually talk about. So I'm I'm betting Rams, Seahawks, Chiefs, Cardinals, Dolphins all make an offer. Uh, maybe you know most of those teams are in on Burns and who I don't again who I don't think will be dealt uh, Burns and Chubb first before Josh Allen perhaps. But uh, those teams probably could be interested in some other teams, the Patriots, Ravens, and the, and the Jets. The Jets are known to be in on Chubb apparently. So um, yeah, I think a lot of those teams might be in and um, you know, the chiefs can't don't really have an opportunity to get Chubb uh, because he's in the same division. I mean, I guess you can't a hundred percent rule. I mean, I, mean, I pretty much get hundred percent rule. That. I'd be shocked, but um, to that rival like that, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, so some teams can be making the call. They can make it happen. I think multiple day twos plus a day three. So a collection of picks that aren't a first, I think, you know, I wouldn't be against trading a first. I just don't really don't think a team will do that. That's a possibility, actually. Pass rush is one of the most important things in football. I think you know it's pretty equal to a first. Multiple day twos, day three, pretty equal. I like that some teams, you know, Seattle has two seconds, you know, things like that. I really like the Seattle fit there. But I think the Jags want to keep Josh Allen. I think if somebody offers them a first plus, like they get, you know, if they offer a first round pick and like a third or fourth, the Jags might go, eh, we, we, maybe we'll do it here. We drafted pretty well this past year. We got some young guys. We'll just add somebody else. Uh, they haven't been playing Josh Allen an insane amount of snaps recently. It's kind of went down, actually. Not a whole lot, but it's kind of went down since the first few weeks. So I found that interesting. Maybe they're more open to trading him than we think. But it sounds like they really don't want to. But also teams do that to make the value go up. You know, So if somebody offers him a first plus, I bet you he gets traded. You know, first might do it. First, like I said, I don't know if a team offers a first. It's very possible. The more I'm talking about, the more I think it's possible. Um, the Jags might do it. If somebody offers them a first plus something else, like a third, a fourth, maybe a fifth, I bet you they do it. I bet you they do it. Um, it really depends on where Chubb goes first. I said Dolphins. If the Dolphins don't get them, it could be, they could be on Allen. Rams. I don't know if I'd pick the Dolphins, even if they miss Chubb. I would probably predict... The first three teams, I like Seattle as the best fit, 
But Rams and Chiefs. I like the Dolphins a fit too because they kind of got that multiple defense. Josh Allen kind of like, it kind of gives me vibes like he needs to be doing hand the dirt and standing up, kind of mix it up a little bit. I like all those teams as fits. Cardinals are like Chubb better for them than Allen for sure. Uh, other teams, it's like kind of even. Um, Chubb's the same thing though. Chubb's like a 4-3 guy coming out, and then he's more of a 3-4 guy his whole NFL career so far. So uh, they're interesting players here. So um, yeah, I'm going to say Jax keep Allen, but the reason I put him in this video is like, ah, oh, there might be a shot here. Jax playing him a little, little bit less recently. Uh, if somebody gives him a good offer, which is possible, he might be dealt. So that's why I ended up putting him in this video. Uh, and then one more, we're going to go Jerry Hughes. Since I know the Rams are very much in on a pass rusher, and I didn't have him landing one, but I think they're very well could be in on Chubb. I kind of was almost predicting that in the past, but uh, I had him going, getting Jerry Hughes. Some of the same teams. Uh, with, with When it comes to Hughes, um, I want to give a – there's probably a top three. I look at the Rams, the Chiefs. I almost want to say top two, Rams and Chiefs. And the Dolphins, if the Dolphins don't get Chubb, Put the Dolphins in there. Uh, I think good fits. Uh, but I, Rams, Chiefs, Dolphins. I'm really looking at the Rams and the Chiefs. I think one of them probably gets them. See some wild card teams in there. Could the Bills, because they know they're all in, just get Hughes back. He's good at getting pressure for them. Didn't always get the quarterback down. Value around a fifth round pick. Um, the problem is he's under contract next year. Four million base salary. This is top of my head. Four, I believe it's dead accurate. Four million base salary. One million uh, roster bonus. So you're on, you're on the hook for five million. Um, there with, I mean, you're not on the hook, but you're, you're going to be paying him 5 million next year. Does a team want it? It's pretty cheap, but he's getting up there in age. So maybe a team that's not that appealing to a team. It shouldn't really be that big of a deal, but something to keep in mind. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to go Rams cause I feel like they're going to land somebody at the pass rush position. Uh, but if they get job, then you know, I'm going to go chiefs or a dolphins, one of the two, you know? So one, that's the, Tough part about predicting these trades. You know, one thing, you get one thing wrong. Like, again, Chubb, I was 50-50 Dolphins, Rams. If he goes to the Rams instead of Dolphins, that kind of shifts some things here. Again, you know, I would change my pick on other guys. Uh, but, yeah, I think Chubb's where we start. And that's why I started in this video. I think that's where we start. I think it sounded like the trade could happen. It's a big one. You know, as somebody might overpay a little bit, even though it's a really good player. So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing it. But the Rams, yeah, their option A is Burns. It's kind of been reported. I don't think he gets dealt. It's going to take too much. And the Rams don't have a first this year. And I think Chubb is their option B. Since Burns is probably off the table at this point, now it kind of shifted to Chubb option A. Um, they're both kind of A, like 1A, 1B, uh, but it kind of was made clear that Burns, they were after for first. Um, you know, but Chubb's kind of probably their option A right now at this given time. Uh, and then Jerry Hughes could be next unless there's some surprise pass. Or, you know, Josh Allen could be next unless there's some. So he's C and then D for Jerry Hughes. Um, so they get their D. That's not that appealing. But Jerry Hughes, again, good at getting pressure. Just didn't really get to the, get the quarterback down as much as he should have with Buffalo, and he's getting up there in age. But the Bills had a bunch of guys like that last year. You know, they didn't have Von Miller. Uh, you know, the Rams got Aaron Donald, who creates for players. They also have Leonard Floyd. They got other guys, too, but they create for guys. So the job is easier for Jerry Hughes. He actually can finish those sacks, and he can get pressure and help guys like Aaron Donald. So I think Hughes could be really good on the Rams, actually. And it's interesting, too, because they added a pass. Not only did they add a pass rusher, Von Miller, to help them win last year, they can add one again. I know Jerry Hughes isn't a big of a name, but Von Miller is now on the Bills. Jerry Hughes was a longtime Bill, was pretty key for them, you know, in their playoff runs in the past, you know, last year even. Uh, and the Rams end up with him. My Von Miller's on the Bills. It's interesting. Just thought of that. Pretty interesting. So, um, again, if you don't see a big name player on this video, it's because I didn't really have a prediction from. The prediction is no trade, and I think it's almost clear in my mind. So, these other guys that I had no trade for in this video, uh, they, um, I, I think it's a little up, it, somewhat up in the air, somewhat. You know, and then there's some other guys that like Albert O. I think he has a good shot line with, landing with the Giants. Uh, Jeff Wilson's name's popped up and look at the the Dolphins, the Ravens, teams like that. I like Fitz, like Damian Harris to the Ravens, but I don't think a trade happens there. Um, there's some things like that. Sidney Jones, a guy to look out for, the cornerback from the Seahawks, maybe quite a few teams. Um, Vikings actually kind of come, come to mind. A lot of zone coverage over there, you know, so things like that. We're always talking with you guys, answering questions on Twitter, so find us there. Uh, comment here on the video. Let me know your guys' thoughts. We have other videos to check out for the trade deadline and a weekly picks and, and a lot more. But very, very important for my my thoughts, the rumors, the breaking news, to follow our Twitter at Godell's NFL. Grades on there as well. Been doing those with videos. Um, so it's something new there. So check it out. Any link you're looking for, pin in the comments. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.